two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our fourth power hour with the Chamber. I am the membership director of the Greater Chambersburg Chamber of Commerce, Jordan Nace. And first and foremost, I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. I am excited to have on another great guest today from Com Commuter Services of PA. She is the employer outreach manager there, Cher Comp. Uh, Cher, just wanted to say I love what you do. I'm a huge fan of trying to reduce emissions uh, in our mid-state to try and create a cleaner PA. I am known to talk too much, so uh, without further ado, I just wanted to hand, uh, hand the stage over to you, uh, and please just take it away. Excited to have you here. Thank you so much. Hi. Yes, everyone here probably knows me. I'm Cher Kampf, and I'm representing Commuter Services of Pennsylvania today. Thank you, Jordan and the Greater Chambersburg Chamber for allowing me to host the Power Hour, or we could call it a happy hour, for all of your members who are, who are attending. And I've attended a couple of your recent virtual sessions, and I've really enjoyed the sessions. Um, you're doing an excellent job engaging with the community, providing a platform for all of us to socialize. And I think this is something we all need more of while we're confined and limited, especially on a rainy day. So my hope is to provide information while also allowing each one of us to interact in a lighthearted way and not to mention to finish up before 5 p.m. So each of us, hopefully, instead of getting back to work, each of us will disengage from technology. So before touching on the first part of the session, I want to put us all in a relaxed mood by sharing a joke. The human brain is a wonderful thing. It starts working the moment you're born and it never stops until, of course, you stand up to speak in public. So I thought that was a good, a good segue into my presentation. But really the great part right now about public speaking via Zoom is I can cheat with a script. And I don't know how anyone can tell, right? So I can use a script. And not to mention, I feel like we're all really getting the hang of the video conferencing tool. Would you guys all agree? We're more comfortable with this element. So it's good that I waited a few weeks to dive into this. So speaking of happy hour, why don't, if all of you would like, I don't know if I'm offending anyone here, but everyone is welcome to take a couple minutes and go grab a drink. Hey, Tyler, let me just get my husband here. Can you make me a margarita? So I'm gonna be honest, this is my favorite part of working from home with my husband. And yes, I am serious. By the end of the day, you know, I'm like, hey Tyler, what are you gonna make me? Let's get some more d'oeuvres here. So yeah, I'm serious. If you guys wanna take a moment and go ahead and grab your favorite quarantine beverage, you're welcome to do that, okay? Feel free. This is like my third <laughs> Zoom meeting in a row, so I'm gonna go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay, go to the bathroom. Take a minute. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> Uh, that's always the worry, right? So I'm waiting for Tyler to fix up my margarita, but I'm going to get started. So the first segment of this power hour is setting up a successful home office space. So I would venture to guess that most of us didn't have a phone home office space before COVID-19. You guys can kind of pull a little bit here in the chat. Did you guys have a setup? Are you just getting a setup together? feel free to share. Um, so you really can't get cleaner. You know, our organization promotes telecommuting, which is the greenest commute of all because you're completely eliminating a commute. So you can't get greener or cleaner than that. And so for most of you who are unfamiliar with commuter services, we are a nonprofit and we promote green modes of travel in order to help, like Jordan said, the regional air quality. So there's many levels of what we do and why, but just for this session, I'm gonna keep that overview simple. Um, we're gonna delve into some more points. So if you are temporarily working from home, these tips may not seem as valuable, but have you ever really wondered if the recent restrictions should lead to more of us choosing or even asking to work from home at least occasionally? So for this to really be successful, I wanted to put some guidelines together that I find helpful. So the first point is selecting an office location. And ideally, this is a separate space from high traffic areas in your home, especially now with kids being home and most people working together. 
So a distraction free might not be possible right now, but a typical home office space should be a distraction free zone. So for anyone curious, telecommuters can qualify for a home office tax deduction. So if you meet the regular, it's called a regular and exclusive rule. So just be sure, I always warn people, we aren't the tax professional. Before, be sure that you check with your tax, prof tax professionals and make sure if you qualify. So another important consideration in selecting your home office location inside your home is, can this space really hold everything you need for work? So for instance, if you have papers and you need them, those filed or you need access to a printer, does this space provide you accommodations for all of those needs? So the next part is just really preparing your space. So once you've chosen the space in your home, the next consideration is figuring out you know, what your essential needs include for this space. The best start is first removing any items. So if you decide, for instance, to designate a closet space to make that a home office, remove all of the things in there beforehand. And then this step allows you to really start with a blank canvas. So be sure you install any outlets needed to make the space an office. And this step is really important if you're transforming a space and you might not naturally have any of the amenities that you need. So finally, just be sure to do any cleaning, any painting or touching up or, or home remodeling before you move the furniture in. So in addition to this being a logical step, it also ensures that you're moving about in the safest way possible without the worry of cords or equipment getting in your way. And feel free to chime in at any point. But we will take a few interactive breaks here. I'm going to touch upon the, the next two points of setting up your home office. And the third step of the process is filling your space with the appropriate equipment and all of the resources to complete your job tasks. So you can start by setting up your furniture. And I always recommend considering an area where there's the best angle of natural lighting. So for instance, try to avoid, it's, it's tricky, but you can always try to avoid your back to the windows. And of course, an import, important placement consideration is where the outlets already exist. So be sure to have power strips available and before adding all of your equipment, maybe test it out, sit down at the desk area, ensure that the lighting and the comfort is meeting your expectations. So at this point, you can add all of those organizational tools needed to be productive, whiteboards, filing cabinets, pencil holders. And then the last segment is adding your personal touch. And this, of course, is my favorite. The final step is just setting up the space that feels like it's your space, that feels comfortable. This part's vital. So be sure to add the decor and the touches that make the space, not only you know, what you feel makes it productive, a productive area for the day, but a place that brings you a sense of calm. You can add your own artwork, personal photos, or any plants. And something to keep in mind is even the best plans have to be tweaked. So take cues from at the end of your work day, how that office space has left you feeling and make adjustments if you need to. So I feel like I was a little long winded there. This is a perfect time to take a break. This is an interactive break. So I want each of you to take a moment and consider how you would describe yourselves in one word. I can go first, unique, but I think my husband, he always likes to call me nerdy. So I want everyone to chime in and tell me how you would describe yourselves in one word. It's hard. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You're my, you're my people. <laughs> yes. I was actually talking to someone today and I was like, if I added a, someone said describe earlier today, they go describe yourself in a sentence. And I was like, is this, is this a quiz? And I was like, you know, the person that walks into the room and finds the dog and starts being best friends with an animal. That's me. That's all, well, you're a likable person then. <laughs> and they're like, that is very well said. <laughs> Anybody else? I love that. Let's chime in. Cause I don't want to just be inundated, you, inundating you with my voice for the next hour. I'm detailed. That's a good quality. Especially well, right it's, it, it's iffy. Respect <laughs> <laughs> that quality. I'm looking for a wedding planner. There you go. <laughs> this power hour is connecting more than one piece here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's called networking. <laughs> yeah. 
So Angie, I'm gonna go, what about you? I'm going to go with inquisitive for myself. I, I have questions about everything all the time. Jordan can back me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need that every now and again. So I appreciate that, Angie. You're on top of it. <laughs> That's amazing. So anybody else, Jordan, what about you? Um, you know, I was sitting here thinking, uh, thinking of a word and um, this, this is probably the worst one shared yet, but a, a little obsessive. Um, you know, I just like things a certain way. And uh, I mean, you see my, my house and I, my, my work office probably has gotten a little messy at, at times. Um, so maybe don't look there, but I'm pretty <laughs> obsessive and compulsive when it comes to trying to get tasks completed or keeping things cleanly. Nice. Sam, did you want to chime in? Passionate. Sam, are you there? Maybe he took he a said, bathroom yeah. break as well, which feel free to. Can you hear yeah. me? Now we can. Oh, there we go. Hey, uh, I think my internet is messing up. Well, he's, he, we heard you say some word, up. but... Sam's ruining the doggone power hour. Sam, come on now, man. <laughs> so what's your one word, Sam? How would you describe yourself in one word? I hate only picking one word. That's the hard part of this. One passionate. Word. That's so true for you. Great, great word. And I love all of the qualities that you all shared. Thank you for your interaction. So the next segment, and you saw this in the promotional piece, is entitled The Importance of Office Ergonomics. And I think we're all kind of getting the hang of the value in office ergonomics. So this seems the right time to kind of breeze through those pieces. Um, now remember the point of ergonomics is to avoid that feeling of strain or fatigue. A couple basics to start. Make sure that the weight of your arms is always supported and avoid reaching your head. They call it craning forward. So be cognizant of your posture. I can always improve, improve in that department. So just be aware of your posture and try not to slouch. And of course your keyboard and your mouse need to be close enough to prevent excessively reaching. And just a few final points. If you find that your feet are dangling from your office chair, try using maybe a stool. I've been finding comfort in relying on a stool and just take, giving my legs a break during the day and propping up my legs and feet. So that reminds me, be sure to always take breaks or at the very least, be sure to give your eyes a break from the screen. I have a coworker who has purchased these blue light blocking glasses. Has anybody heard of those? Um, something to keep in mind or if you, you, know, if you don't wanna make the purchase, just again, make sure you give your eyes breaks from the computer screen, glance out the window, take time throughout your day to shift your focus somewhere else occasionally. And if any of you tuned in to last week's Thursday Power Hour with Kim, it was incredible. So be sure to take time. She recommended and walked through some desk chair yoga. And I feel like my Power Hour, by the way, it will be hard to top that one. Um, it was a wonderful session, and I think Jordan might have some of the recording or some of the tidbits from Kim if you guys need to, need to be reminded of the details of the desk chair yoga. So my final words of wisdom in regards to home, er home ergonomics is to stay hydrated. My family really always laughs at me, but I truly believe that water is the answer to everything. So again, I want to take a fun little interactive break. And I want to ask everyone here, if, especially over the past few weeks, if you've developed any tips or tricks or tips or tips or trips, tricks that you can use in the office as far as ergonomics that hasn't been mentioned. So feel free to chime in and share any of your best practices at this point. What do you guys think? Hmm. Anything that brings you comfort throughout your work day or anything you've adjusted over the past few weeks? Uh, pillows be yes. between my back and my chair have been helpful. Yeah. Has anyone tried a different chair since working from home and being in front of the computer so frequently? Because I think that can make a difference as well. I mean, it's a little embarrassing. I, I sort of feel like I'm a old, old man, old retired man, like my, my man, Rick Heckman over there. But, uh, 
<laughs> no, I, uh, I can't. I can't sit. I had this wooden chair I was sitting in for like two weeks. And it's just like I had to get a pillow to sit to sit like put on that chair to sit down. I was like couldn't do it anymore. So uh, yeah, I felt that pain. It's incredible how when you make little tweaks like that. And originally, I just grabbed one of the more cushiony chairs from my dining room. I grabbed and I was using that as my chair. And it's incredible how much more comfortable that is than just grabbing like like you said, a wooden chair. So look around, maybe you have another option. Anybody else, a little trick to home ergonomics? My little trick is having a glass of wine every couple hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that gets you instantly relaxed. Yes. Well, now that I'm retired, I can do that. I mean, I feel like all of us can do that more frequently right now, right? We all have an excuse and, right? The you need an excuse to game. have a glass of wine? Yes. I hope you're having one now. Show me your wine glass now. <laughs> I'm not having one right now. Feel free to take a break and grab one. Thank you guys for sharing and engaging. That, that was super helpful. Share so, one quick thing yeah. I wanted to bring up too. I think um, during during this, something that's been a little bit different is that I haven't always been focusing on beforehand. What is it's important to give yourself something to look forward to. I mean, yes. whether that's like honestly your slice of pizza or something at lunchtime, or maybe going outside to walk or take a hike or something like that. For me, that's like really important to get through a day at this point in time. It's you so, important. so important. Well, I need a bike first, Sam, but I appreciate that. <laughs> you do. You need to get a bike because it is. It's so relieving. And I, I love the days where it's nice out because I feel like we're all more motivated to get out there when it's nice, right? But not today. Today is not that day. So now you need to rely on the wine today. But yeah, I agree. It's important. And I think from a lot of conversations I'm having, people are overworked right now. You're, you're very connected. You're, there's a lot of things going on. So a lot of us from my feedback with, with people I engage with is we're sitting in front of the computer for too long. So it is important. I've been trying to make myself take a lunch break. So make sure I take 30 minutes or ideally take an hour just because it's good to move around you know, it's healthy for your mind, for your spirit, for your body. So really great point. Anybody else? I like that engagement. I, so the I, next segment I wanted to talk about is why teleworking is truly sensible for business. So of course, post COVID-19, I'm certain there will be a ton of studies and evaluations on teleworking. In fact, our organization recently distributed one ourselves and Chambersburg Chamber also distributed it. Thank you for sending that blast out. Um, so the purpose really is to gauge strategies and struggles as well as consider what the needs are centered around teleworking. So I wanted to highlight a few fun stats. According to a 2019 survey by Flex Jobs, of more than 7,000 employees, the top reasons people do seek flexible options include work-life balance, family, time savings, and commute stress. So when asked about productivity, 65% report, reported that they are more productive in a home office. So a lot of people might wonder initially why, and these same people convey, conveyed because there's fewer distractions, there's fewer disruptions, and you have the reduced stress from commuting. So any of you who are currently working from home, I, I know that we can all agree on one thing that we don't miss, the commute itself and all of the stressors attached to that drive into work, right? Really no matter what the distance is, you never know what you're gonna get. So in between this session, I wanted to do another interactive break. So if everyone could just take a moment and consider how long it does take you typically to get into your home, or excuse me, to get into your physical office space. And now I want you to think about what else freeing up that amount of time can now provide you with. So anyone can, can share an example, but for me, I now feel like I have the time to start and end my workday with a walk with my dog or a walk with my family. Anybody else think about what you're now doing with that freed up commute time? 
probably well, definitely in the mornings I make myself a healthier breakfast than I would probably normally eat. So I probably find myself doing that or prepping food maybe for supper at the end of the day, maybe a better meal than that than we would normally eat. So we're definitely eating healthier at my house since I've been working from home. That's awesome. I like to hear that. And I read something in when I was doing some research recently, really when you're working from home and you are sitting in front of your computer all day, your breakfast is your most important meal. But you brought up a great point that we all don't have the excuse now that we're running around, we can't cook because we now have that flexibility. And I think that's a general benefit to being able to work from home is you do have that time to plan and prepare for a meal, even if you're busy in the evening and you're going here and there for work events. Anybody else want to share? I personally have got caught up on laundry. Yeah, same here. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> yes. I avoided it for the first few weeks. I still avoided it, but yes, we have no more excuse for not doing laundry. Don't. Anyone else? Or it might not, just something to consider. You know, I think we all can be weighted down by the struggles of working home, working from home right now. But in general, when you take away all of these other stressors, depending on each of our own, you know, I have three children here. So I love the days where I'm working from home and they're out the door to school. It's not like that right now. Um, but it's but it's important to think of the upside and really to kind of quantify the time that you now have that would have been replaced by your commute. It's just an important and a huge benefit. Thank you. And unless you're getting dressed um, yeah. for work in your work clothes every single day just to stay consistent, you don't have as much laundry to do. Um, I am still working off of the same gallon of gas I had the first of March. Wow. Yes. Yep. That's an awesome point. Just the fact that we're not using the gas, there's so many benefits there on the environment. But you make a great point. Just think about all the time you take, even if you have a, you're lucky and you have a short commute, just making sure you have, you know, if you're getting out the door and you have to rush right to a sporting event or you have to rush right to another engagement, you're prepping not just for your work day, but That's your right. entire day. <clears throat> so it's really nice if we all could just kind of relax and enjoy the fact that that free time can be put to whatever use we choose. Sam, did you want to chime in with anything? Well, I have a very short commute to work. So does my friend Jordan. And we're saving probably, what, five minutes each to, to, to work. So for me, it's stepping outside and playing five minutes with the kids and then going back to work. Yes, right. And that's, you know, but you can probably attest to the fact that that's a huge perk in living so close to where you work, which yeah. is in and of itself environmentally friendly. Well, it gives you options from a 20 minute walk to a seven, eight minute bike ride to a five minute drive. Mm -hmm. And, and I can certainly speak on that as well. So before, um, uh, before moving here at the end of, uh, I guess it was the beginning of March, I believe, like, looking back on it, I had lived in Carlisle. So every day it was um, about a 45 minute drive to Chambersburg. And I'll tell you, none of that was fun. Um, mm -hmm. Now I literally live a hop, skip and a jump from work. And it has just improved my mood tremendously and um again it, it does help when you you're not having to spend as much on gas every uh every single week so i i love it love it love it yeah and if you're able it i mean most people take the job that makes sense for them or take the job that's available and we find from engaging with so many commuters that often they are traveling over county or state lines but for me this is my 14th year with the commuter services project I can't imagine putting myself through that. And it's when you have that experience, like Jordan said, when you make that transition from a 45 minute commute, and that's not just a 45 minute commute, you're fighting traffic. And if there's an accident, you know, you're gonna get to work late basically. The time it takes to get ready for that then is a whole not, you have to get up how much earlier? I mean, yeah, it, it just flat out stunk. And this is a much better life I'm living now. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. So I think for those people who live closer to their regular office space, 
the transition back to work will be such a breeze compared to the people who are kind of getting comfortable with not having to put in that extra time for their commute. Thank you guys for that engagement there. So for this, from this same study that I addressed earlier, 78% said that a flexible job would allow them to be healthier. And I think we all can agree that now and moving forward, health should always be our priority. And the most telling stat from this survey was that 97% want to be flexible long-term. So I'm unsure of how many on this call would love to dig deeper into those statistics. I'm happy to share some. You guys can always link up with me via email and I can share some more deta details from some studies that we've looked at, as well as the feedback from our own survey that we've distributed. So at this point, we've had 113 employers in the area complete our survey. So that's been some telling information as well. A huge piece to consider is the cost of overhead as well. So most employers don't realize how much housing just one employee costs, and in turn, how much can be saved by providing just the option to work from a home office. And additionally, this eliminates the need to expand parking or the need to even consider relocating to a larger facility due to expanding business. So at this point, I've highlighted key benefits to telecommuting, also known as teleworking. But most important to note is that flexibility in the workplace is environmentally friendly. So reducing a commute entirely eliminates travel, and this results in a slew of overall reductions. So any employer that provides flexibility is not only an environmentally conscious business, but they stand out, as, to me, they stand out as an appealing employer to work for. So again, we're gonna do an interactive break. And I wanted to, I want to do a little poll. So considering your current working scenario, and just take a minute to, to think about this, what would you change right now? Can you phrase that one more time, Cher? So thinking about your current working scenario. So right now, what's happening? So don't think about what was happening before the pandemic. Think about right now. What would you change? And take a moment, because you probably haven't thought about this. I mean, I could say one thing right off the bat to give you an example. I would definitely, to continue this long term, I can't have my kids around. So, to feel like, so that's just a slight example. I mean, it's wonderful to see them, but you know, those dis disruptions certainly don't help. So that's just a, a loose example. Anyone else? Well, um, I guess for, for my benefit, you know, my girlfriend and I have similar jobs in, in essence of we both have to be on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes that's at the same time. So that can sometimes be really difficult, but we've been doing a great job of, you know, sometimes I'll go into the bedroom and shut the door and she'll then go out to, you know, the kitchen or the living room area and she'll do it there. And then we'll, you know, flip flop and just try to keep each other happy. So um, th that's something I guess you could say. Yeah. And that's a good point. And if a lot of us had the preparation before this to know like, hey, in a month, I'm gonna be exclusively working from home. What do I need to do? How do I need to prepare? You know, do I need a nice soundproof headset? There's so many little pieces that can go into play. Anybody else? I'm essential, so I'm still doing both. <laughs> okay. Um, so, but I would say the Zoom meeting's definitely hard. My fiance is a teacher. And right now his brother is with us too, and they're both teachers. So everyone's having Zoom meetings. Like right now I'm down, I'm upstairs and I can hear them downstairs in a full blown conversation. And the dog's barking. So like you can't hear it. I can hear it. <laughs> oh no. Those distractions. It and I honestly, to be truthful, I think my dog is the biggest distraction because if she has her eyes set on something out the window, I can't oh. control her if I'm on a call. <laughs> I have to mute myself a lot. I'm like, oh, sorry. But we're all kind of getting the hang of that. And what's, what I think is wonderful during this is that anything is acceptable. 
So before COVID-19, if you were on a call and your dog was barking or your kids were running around or, you know, whatever, your hair was a mess, I think that that was more critiqued, but it's really neat that now anything goes. And I find comfort in that. Yeah. I honestly, I never really used Zoom until now. So I feel like it made me expand like my maybe like interaction with other people or networking because I never really have done this. So I like I I'm an Android person. So I didn't even FaceTime because that's like an iPhone feature. Right. <laughs> so I definitely expanded on like Zoom and things like that. So I like it. It's easy. It's simple, especially if I can't get to like um, some RPNs um, like with hospitals or networking within my field. Like I can at least maybe jump on a Zoom meeting with them in the future. Um, and then, you know, explain what I have and then we can go from there. That's a really good point. The benefit here is that, you know, we can always look at the deeper, darker side, but to me, now that we're in the thick of this, the benefits really do outweigh any of the negatives, but I think it's great. I feel like I never used to want to FaceTime, even my kids, I would avoid that just call. But now not only am I more comfortable with the video on any of my meetings, and regardless of, you know, how prepared you are, but I'm also more comfortable FaceTiming. So it's mm-hmm. neat how we've transitioned. Um, so I like that we took a positive spin there. Anyone else? I, on the other hand, um, I'm single. I live alone, so I don't have those same distractions that you guys have or wrestling for um, time on the computer or silence in the house or whatever. So my problem is more... Um, self-discipline yes Uh, when you're accustomed to going to a job you're kind of regulated in the sense that you know you're gonna you know what you have to do you're gonna be up you're going to do things on a routine whereas now I'm kind of when I get around to it if I feel like it um, you you have structured hours at work I'm now finding myself on the computer at seven o'clock in the morning just because I'm an early riser. Um, In the afternoon, I may take a nap. And next thing I know, it's 8.30 at night and I'm on the computer working on something that I want to get a jump on for tomorrow. Um, So I'm I'm just, you know, I I would, if I could change, you know, something in this scenario, it would be getting myself into some type of of, uh, discipline uh, we don't know how long this is going to go on, number one. I, I would have loved to thought I would have done it by now, but it's, <laughs> we've gone on this long and I'm still having the same issues. So, <laughs> you right. know, that's not working out too well for me right now, but I know that that's something I need. Well, if you want a dog for distraction, my dog always <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. Many okay. people have told me that that's what I need is <laughs> some type of a pet in the house, but no, that, no, I, I raise children. I'm now a grandmother. I have five grandchildren in college. All, two of them are graduating this year, unfortunately, and they're not going to get to have that graduation experience. And that's stressful on both of their families, you know, as well as grandma, because, you know, we were all counting on this. Um, so there's a, a whole lot of things going on, but no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. I mean, I would say if anyone's considering getting a dog, this is definitely the opportune time. Well, you could stay home and train it. (laughs) Yes, you have the time. But it's interesting. I was on, I belong to this group, Women in Transportation, and I tuned into a Rotunda series today. And the speaker, she talked about kind of all these pieces and how, for me, I'm used to sometimes working from home. So I'm okay with the schedule and the organization, but I do think it's it's a tough transition for people who are not. So what we've done on our team is we establish first thing Monday morning, we all write out a work plan and it's a daily work plan. And you're not saying for sure that you'll be able to get to all of those tasks, but it sets yourself up in the right position. So you give yourself a reference point and an idea of what you wanna get done throughout the day. And that's been, I, that's been something I never did before. I always have my weekly little notes but putting the, the plan into writing for me has been huge. Okay. But again, I think with anything, it's the more you get used to it, the easier it will become. And I don't know what your job is, but it probably also depends on what your daily tasks include. 
I am kind of a list maker, if not on paper, in my head always, because that's that detailed thing. I, um, I need, in one breath, I'm very structured. I need to know what I'm doing, you know, and I'm kind of uh, methodical about how I do things. And, and uh, sort of like Jordan was saying, you know, I like things the way I like things. So I, I you know, I, I'm, I work a certain way. Um, and, and I typically always accomplish my work list or my work plan, if you will, uh, in the course of a day. But I'm not as structured while I'm at home about that work day. You know, you kind of, they're not going to pay you to stay in the office longer than you're supposed to be in the office. So, <laughs> so right. you kind of work within those hours. Uh, I never brought my work home. I didn't work from home. Uh, I've had to learn how to uh, access files and, and documents from home uh, when I'm used to a file cabinet, for instance, right. um, or, or just getting up from my desk and going and talking to somebody I want to talk to, you know, or, or ask a question up. So um, having to learn a new way all the way, you know, it's new to all of us. We're all finding our way through the thing. Um, but we're get, I'm doing that, it's little by little, but my issue is the self, self stuff, you know, so that I can just get back into a routine. I know one of these days, you know, this is going to be over. I'm asking myself, how are you going to go back to that schedule when you're not used to do, <laughs> doing it? I'm, I'm not old enough to retire yet, so I need to get it together. <laughs> I think it, it's, Transitions are always hard, but I can say no matter how many of us use technology, none of us used it to the degree that we do now. That's and correct. And that's the thing that I do because I miss the socialization outside of my home. So I feel like before COVID-19, I would feel hesitant to, to send a jab. We had Jabber, we had Microsoft Teams. I would be hesitant to bother somebody virtually but now I think we all look forward. So I try to just call people virtually who I work with. I try to engage with them more. And I think that that helps as well. And that, you know, that provides you with that same relief that you would get if you were in the office and you just popped over to somebody's desk. Thank you for that engagement. I appreciated that. Okay. So the next segment, and this one is a little bit brief, but I just wanted to touch upon, and I know we all come from different businesses, but I wanted to give an overview of telework resources and materials. So commuter services, we're here to support any employer who wants to enhance or even implement a telework program. We recently, I talked about distributing a survey to employers, and we learned that this is what people are looking for. They're looking for policy development from scratch, technological resources and recommendations, right? Because I feel like at the start of this, we were all inundated. There's so many options. There's WebEx, there's Zoom. So people are looking for a one-stop shop for all of these recommendations. They're looking for evaluation. I don't know if any of you within your company have been evaluated, but I think it's a huge piece to understand how you're feeling and what your struggles are. Um, and also we can provide manager and employee training. I'm happy to collaborate. And this is something we do regularly with HR and IT teams in order to just initiate these conversations in a productive direction. So we've provided policy templates for employer partners of ours to tweak. Our team has a plethora of one sheets on what employers need to telework. We can either provide survey and evaluation recommendations, or we're happy to facilitate those surveys ourselves. So of course, we're able to organize training sessions directly with managers and employees. So just keep in mind, that's something that we're always, as an organization, able to do. And it's, it's free to work with our organization, of course. So another interactive break, and this is the final interactive break. So this involves all of you conveying, and again, in one word, right now, how you're feeling. And keep in mind, this is going to fulfill the feedback section of this power hour. <laughs> so let me know how you're feeling. And you can just say, we can all talk about it. You want to know how I'm feeling? How are you feeling? 
I'm totally fantastic because I'm retired and I don't have to be in charge of people anymore. That's true. How about everyone else? I feel better after having this uh, session uh, this evening and hearing the feedback that everyone else is having. I mean, it just, uh, it just really um, hits the fact that we're all going through uh, this very similar things and we're all trying to deal with it in very similar ways. So uh, it's good to hear feedback from everybody to, uh, you know, keep sanity and, and just know that we'll get through all of this. Absolutely. And I feel because we mentioned and Alyssa mentioned she was on other calls today. I knew I was on other virtual calls. Sometimes when you, you put this on your calendar, you're hesitant because you can think of all these other things you want to get done. But I can truly attest when I make the time to step away from what my regular tasks are and take part in these virtual sessions, I always feel better. So hopefully you guys are leaving and I feel more relaxed because it's been great to engage with all of you and to collect your feedback. Um, and really just, I look at this as a way of socializing. So I appreciate the time and I can say, I mean, Jordan's leading the path here because this is something that he set the tone for with these chambers for chamber events and all of the ones that I've attended have been the same. And I can say compared to some others, they're so interactive and I think it's important that you have and you keep that interaction. Very kind of you to say, I really appreciate that, Sherry, thanks. Did so she the just, final, yeah, anybody else? Jordan, did she just say that you need to do more bingo? <laughs> well, I, I mean, thank you. I appreciate you giving me the, the plug on that. Uh, we, we're doing a, uh, a Cinco de Mayo themed uh, Mingle Mayhem. I sometimes get that confused, Mayhem Mingle or Mingle Mayhem, but I believe it's Mingle Mayhem um, next Tuesday at 3 p.m. It's gonna be like I shared Cinco de Mayo theme. So uh, I, I encourage everybody to wear something Cinco de Mayo themed. And we're also gonna have a gentleman, Billy Zajos from the Copper Kettle. He's gonna give a per, uh, demonstration on how to make a perfect margarita. And then we have Monica uh, from Veroni Cafe. Um, she's going to show us how to make fajitas and a really good guacamole. So I, I really encourage everybody to come and check that out. That's so awesome. And this is reminding me, on Tuesday, we had in our neighborhood, we have wonderful people who are arranging these food trucks. And there was a taco truck and a vineyard was here as well for wine slushies. And so of course I sent my husband and my oldest daughter to go get the food. I didn't realize, but I never told them to get guacamole. And they came back without it. And I was like, who doesn't get guacamole? So, but I was telling my husband that I'm gonna tune into that. I saw that and I'm so excited. I'm tuning into that, that mixer. It looks super exciting and very useful. I appreciate that. And it should be a good time and it will be, it will be useful. I can guarantee that. So I'm going to wrap up the segment here. I did want to try to keep myself to 50 minutes. So you guys had extra time to end your day. So I just wanted to wrap up with a little highlight about our free app. So we do provide, we call it an incentive app and it's for anyone and everyone. It's called Commute PA. It's provided for any flat platform. So Android or iPhones. So feel free to download the app and learn all of the benefits. I like to say it's essentially a one-stop shop for transportation resources. So there's a mapping tool where you can find rideshare partners. You can view other pieces through that section. So you can see if you're traveling somewhere, where the park and rides are, where the shared bike stations are, if transit is in fact available. So for those working from home, just know that you can record all of these trips that you're eliminating by not traveling somewhere, you can record those. It's called, it's called a telecommute. So if you go into the track it, you go to the trips section and then you just record that trip. And, it, and in, in addition to just showcasing the reduction in trips, you're able to record all the times that you walk or bicycle. So if you're doing it and it's not for work purposes, you just label and record that as a non-commute trip. But just be sure also that you list a destination, you need a start, an origin, and a destination, and then you mark that as a round trip. So for instance, if I take a walk in my neighborhood with my dog, just at the halfway point, I'll just plug in whatever street we went to. So that's an important piece so that the 
the app can tell you how many calories you burn, for instance, outside of just the fun, you know, environmental stats. So I know a lot of people feel inundated because there seems to be an app for everything. But the reason that I like to use apps and most people do is it's really simple because you can reap the rewards. So within our app, we have a really incredible incentive platform. Each trip that you record, no matter what it's for, leaves you with points. And then you can redeem those points for either monthly gift card drawings or coupons and discounts. So I'm challenging anyone on this call. I want you to download the app today. If you worked from home, you can record that. I know Sam already uses our app and records when he bikes and things. But once you do that, our current gift card drawing for this month is $50 to Best Buy. And we give multiple gift cards away as well. So my favorite part of the app though is seeing all of my personal stats. So the miles I'm eliminating, the emissions I'm preventing, the calories burned, and the money saved by just reducing those individual car trips. So if anybody has questions, I welcome them. I can send you more information about the app. And thank you guys so much for taking the time and choosing to join this session. I've enjoyed the close of my Thursday and I appreciate the engagement with each of you. I hope you all stay well, you continue to be happy, because you all seem happy, and you remain safe. Could you, could you, wanted to, could wanted to just give you the, op I'm sorry, Rick, go ahead. You, you no, go, first, and I'll go. Just, just a quick question, what was the name of the app again? The app is called Commute PA. I'm gonna plug it in here if you wanna look in the chat section. Thank Commute you. Commute PA. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you that asking that, Rick. I was going to ask her that as well because I want to download that as well. Um, but no, Cher, I really appreciate you coming on today. The information you gave was wonderful. I think everybody got something out of it. And again, I appreciate all of you interacting just as well as Cher said because that's what the goal of this is. Obviously, um, interaction has kind of gone by the wayside in regards to being able to get out and about and, and talk with your friends in person and things like that. So this is really refreshing. And I can't lie, I always do feel better after um, these Zoom sessions as well. Um, Cher, just wanted to, I'm, I'm not sure, did you want to give some information in regards to, you know, your personal email or phone or something like that? If, if anyone here on the, on the call wants to reach out to you personally? That's a good idea. I'm going to plug in my email in the chat section. And then if, and hopefully I type that right. And, and if you guys have any questions thereafter, or you just want to engage in some way about any of the pieces of information we talked about, there's my email. And if you don't copy this, I guess, Jordan, maybe I'll rely on you to, to get my information out if anyone needs it. That's not a problem. What I'll do is whenever we post this video on our Chambersburg Chamber Facebook page, I'll go ahead and post your contact information in there as well. Thank you. Yep, you're very welcome. So is that it? Anybody else have anything else for share on this Thursday afternoon? Just to say thank you to Cheryl and I really enjoyed it. Um, Jordan, thank you for coming up with the idea of having these uh, sessions. Um, I did sign up for the one that had the bingo last week or week before, but um, it was my first experience with an office laptop at home, and I didn't know the things that I had to do with my IT people from my network in order to get it to work off-site. And so I wasn't able to get in that day. So I'm glad to hear that you do have these recorded on the, on the um, what did you say, on the website? Yes, we do. We're putting them out pretty much as we do them. So they're on our Chambersburg Chamber Facebook page. So Greater oh, okay. Chambersburg Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Facebook. And I'm already signed up for the Cinco de Mayo one. All right. Well, you better be We're there. Learn how to make margaritas. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, when Ricky was talking about a glass of wine, I was thinking, well, where are you getting wine when the liquor stores are closed? He's what are you doing? Wine now and go pick up. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, well, you know, I did hear that they were doing that, but I also heard people were frustrated because they couldn't get through there, and you're doing so many a day and that's, you know, it's days correct. later, and I thought, well, I'm going to stay out of that traffic for a while. Right. You, you have to prepare. You have to prepare. I have over 100 bottles of wine in the house, so. All right, Rick, uh, Well, that's prepared. Over. Yeah, we're because on our way. That's, yeah. I think they said you're only allowed to order, like, eight bottles at a time. And I thought, well, you're not going to be sharing with anybody then. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you gotta... and at, at our local grocery stores, 
for the longest time, you could only go there and get two bottles. And so here you are, you're limited with how many trips you're making to the store. So uh -huh. it is True. nice. I haven't needed to do the curbside yet, but it's nice that that's at least an option now. There you go. There you go. So okay, either, I've enjoyed online. every one of you this afternoon. It's nice to talk to you. And, and so if anyone, that, I guess the tip is if you need booze, either <laughs> order online or stop at Rick Heckman's house. That's the only message I got. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not <laughs> walking distance to Rick's house. Track that trip. <laughs> yeah, Rick, Rick, just add your, um, in the chat, your address. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm not giving oh, my Rick. address. He's like, all that wine is for me. It's funny how much more we're going through right now, right? Yes. It's normal. Well, hey, guys, look. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate the time. Enough talking about wine, although we love it. Um, let's get off of here. Have a great Thursday. And if I don't talk to you guys uh, tomorrow, have a great weekend. And we'll, we'll talk to you again soon, okay? Bye. 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 Bye.